What is going on everyone? Soliday Holiday here, and today I'm bringing you my entire Zero to Hero challenge. In this challenge, we are going to be playing a Retribution Paladin, and we are going to be starting from level 63 and working our way to Keystone Hero, which is 2500 Mythic IO rating. This video is all of my previous videos put together. I know that this is a very long video, but I know that when I'm playing WoW, I enjoy having a video or a TV show or something like that on my second screen as background noise or something to halfway watch while I'm playing. So I figured this would be great for people like that. Also, if you've already watched all the videos and you don't want to watch it again, I completely understand. But if you want to support me and help your boy out with that good old algorithm, consider just leaving this video on in the background and muting it or something like that. Just, you know, help your boy out. For those of you that have not watched the previous episodes, this is honestly my first time making videos in a long time, and before this I've never really made WoW videos before. I've been pretty much dumping all of my time into WoW lately, and I figured, you know what, why not try to make some videos and have some fun with it. A little bit of background about me. I've been playing WoW since Wrath of the Lich King, but Dragonflight is honestly the first time that I've really pushed and tried to push to the higher end of the game, right? I think that the only time that I really pushed to end game content was back in Cataclysm when I beat Deathwing, and I'm not even sure if I killed him on Heroic or Normal or what. That being said, Season 3 of Dragonflight is also the first time that I've accomplished Keystone Master, and I completed it on my main, which is a Warlock. So the rules for this challenge are pretty simple. I will not be trading any gold or anything else from other characters. I've removed this character from my Raider IO profile, so that way no one can see my mains rating or anything like that, and I will not have any help from friends or guildmates or anyone that I know. I also have a Twitch channel that I plan on beginning streaming, so if you want to check it out or give me a follow, it will be down in the description. So all this being said is that I have very little to no experience with Retribution Paladins, right? The only experience that I really do have with Paladins in the first place is leveling this character as protection, and I leveled him to level 60 back in the last expansion. This spec is brand new for me, and I honestly haven't played melee DPS in years, so the role was also brand new to me. The first actual episode of this challenge is a little different than what you guys would see if you watched the first episode one, right? I redid the narrative and the actual audio because I went back and watched it and... Boy, do I have no idea why so many people watched the first episode and actually liked it. It was it was a little rough, right? It was it was a little rough to listen to, even from my standpoint. But we did get a lot accomplished in the first episode. We got our Zandalarian troll retribution paladin, Solly, from level 63 to 70. After we hit 70, we ended up getting a bunch of low item level gear from Everbloom and LFR and all that kind of stuff. From here, we went and got into a plus two Everbloom. At this point in the challenge, we had a base idea of what the rotation was going to be, and we copied a talent tree from Icy Veins, right? We did not have any weak auras or anything like that, but we were able to knock out that dungeon with no issues. We ended up three chesting that dungeon, and we continued on to a plus five black rock hold with the same group. Our DPS was not the best, right? Due to us not having the best gear and doing horrible on the rotation, but we were able to finish the dungeon, and we finished that week with a item level of 427. So, everything in this video so far has been future Solly, right? Me, right now. But from here, I'm going to let the episodes play out like they normally did, minus the recaps and the end of the video recaps and whatnot, right? All that being said is if you do like this video, consider hitting that good old like button, right? And consider subscribing. Liking the video really does help out the video and, you know, I would be eternally grateful. So at the start of this week for the weekly reset, we started out with our very first thing, our Great Vault. In the Great Vault, we actually had the option of ring band of burning thorns which was eye level 447 a vigilant protectors bracers which was eye level 444 a cataclysmic signet band which would have been 447 and an, an, an i don't even know how to say it, a, Nor a norman helm which was eye level 460 the ringer trinket would have been really nice but the 460 helm is just a little bit too good to pass up so we chose the helmet after choosing the helm that put us at an eye level of 430 and also out of the great vault we got a plus five waycrest manor so this week it's actually uh the weekend event is time walking so uh it's time walking cataclysm so what we did is we uh wanted to run the time walking weekly so that way we could get that cash at the end of it and the first one that we got into was the vortex pinnacle we ran through the Vortex Pinnacle with zero issue and we were able to beat the dungeon with no problem. The second one was actually Throne of Tides and it was weird to be in, under time walking instead of a Mythic Plus dungeon. The, then the third we ran with the same group as the second and we ran the Lost City of Tall Beer with zero issue. After that, just wanted to kind of take a break from running the time walking dungeons real quick and we ran the Super Bloom and we got the cash but we didn't get anything from the Super Bloom. Uh, we did end up killing the world boss, but we didn't get anything from there. But as I was killing the world boss, a rare spawned, which was the Somnibulent Ori, 
Um, and we actually got a pair of 431 boots from that rare, which was awesome. After that, we completed the Ally of the Dream Wardens and Planting Seed Quests. So once we had all three caches, I wanted to open them all up at the same time. On the first cache, we got a 444 Waste, which was the Arctic Warden's Girdle, which was a 23 eye level upgrade for us. Then we got a 441 Ring, which was the Snipping Sleet Circle, which was a 26 eye level upgrade. And then we got a 441 Shoulder, which was the same eye level that we already had. So this one just had Mastery instead of Crit and Haste. So I did a little research and I learned the stat priority for Rep Paladins. So the priority goes Strength, Haste, Crit or Verse, and then Mastery. So I, I kept the ones that we had. After opening these, I uh, just went ahead and completed that, aiding the Accord, but didn't get anything. From here, we went and finished the rest of our time walking, and we did a Black Rock Caverns. On the Black Rock Caverns, we actually got a piece of 428 eye level gloves from the last boss, which was an upgrade for us. Then we completed our last time walking, which was the Vortex Pinnacle. After completing all the dungeons for the time walking, we opened the cache and we got a 460 ring. It was called the Band of Burning Thorns, and that put us at a 440 eye level. So at this point, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but whenever there is a time walking weekly event, you can actually run one of the raids from that expansion. So for this week, we had the Firelands uh, from Cataclysm that we could do, and there's an extra quest involved in it. We got a 454 waste from one of the bosses. It was called the Uncrushable Belt of Fury. So once you complete that quest and you kill the boss from the raid, you actually get a cache of time dwarf treasures. From this, we were super lucky, and we actually received a 467 two-handed mace. This is, it was Sulfurus, the Exti Extinguished Hand, and that was a huge upgrade. It's a freaking hero level item. That was, I can't, I'm at a loss for words. Hopefully our luck continues as it has been because we've been getting some amazing drops lately and it's been awesome. With this two-handed mace that we got, it actually put us at an eye level of 442. So after our substantial gear upgrade and our crazy weapon upgrade, it was time for us to go ahead and start hitting some Mythic Plus. I know, four minutes into the video and we're finally hitting what the video is about, right? So we started out with a plus five Waycrest Manor. We killed the first boss without any issue. As you guys can probably already see by the video is I did actually download some weak auras for the Rep Paladin. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. It's such a huge quality of life thing and it helps out so much. I, like I said, I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. So after we killed the first boss, we moved on to the trash after. And you can just truly see how amazing Rep Paladin's AoE damage is. It's awesome. But I also noticed on the Soulbound Goliath that my damage, my single target damage is super low. I was barely doing more damage than the tank and that was super embarrassing. So seeing the tank almost out DPS me, right? I was like, hey, after this dungeon, I'm going to go and look up more and try to see what I'm doing wrong, see where I'm going wrong with these rotations. If there's anything I need to do better on the talents or if there's anything that I need to do better on the rotation, we'll see what's going on. So I did a little bit of research and I realized that my Avenging Wrath is my opener. I need to use Avenging Wrath at all times. That's that's I need to use it before I use Final Reckoning. I need to use it before I use anything else. Um, also, a big takeaway was making sure that I don't overcap the Holy Power. Once I have my tier set, I know that I can just so I can um, get the buff from the tier set, but I'm not even close to that at the moment. So I really need to make sure that I'm not overcapping my Holy Power. So yeah, that was that was some of the big takeaways from the research was just making sure that I need to use Avenging Wrath all the time. That needs to be my number one thing that I use pretty much any time that I can. I, I know that I'm not using it effectively, but I know that I'm not just not using it. So if you guys have any other tips for the single target on Mythic Plus, I don't know if that's just the way that Red Paladins are, is that their damage is super low on the single target, but any tips would be greatly appreciated. Another thing that I'm really used to is I'm used to going from the the Heartsbane triad, the first three witches, right, to immediately to Rawl the Gluttonous because they want to use the, um, normally tanks want to use Lust for um, the first and the second boss, so you skip the Soulbound Goliath for a minute, so that, that was a little weird as going directly to the second boss. So on the trash leading up to the third boss, the tank decided to pull all the mobs from inside the boss room, right, to a corner inside the boss room it's a little out of practice but hey if we can pull it off we can pull it off but what ended up happening is he we started in the back right corner and the tank started pulling everybody to the back left corner the front left corner whatever it is and so i don't think that the warrior was really tracking what was going on right and so the tank is still trying to lead the mobs to the front left corner and the 
warrior takes aggro. So this kind of led to a split between the two groups and um, the warrior almost died a, a quite a bit, but luckily the tank kind of realized what was going on, came over real quick. Um, I almost died there and I, it was actually my first time using my big bubble. Um, I actually used the utility for once on the uh, rep paladin, but sadly uh, we couldn't pull it out. The tank ended up dying and that led to all of us dying and we wiped from there. So thankfully, when we came back after the wipe, the tank decided to pull the mobs out into the hallway so that way we could kill them from there and not pull the boss, right? Well, there was a couple ads left in the back of the room, and so the tank tried to pull them and ended up actually pulling the boss too. It's no big deal. We were able to push through, but this, you know, when you're in the Mythic Plus and or just when you start panicking in games in general, right? I don't know what I was doing, but I completely forgot how to use cooldowns. I completely forgot how to dodge abilities. I, I, I was just playing horrible. I was purely panicking at this point um which i don't know why it wasn't that big of a deal it was just a plus five it's not that big but um, my brain just stopped working but we did end up able to kill the boss and we moved on from there so as we led up to the final boss i i don't i was getting a little bit impatient or something i guess and normally i'm i'm not like this is that um we just kind of hung out in front of the boss for a second i didn't see that the healer was in fact drinking trying to get his mana up and uh, i got a little impatient and trying to see what's going on but then we uh killed the final boss of waycrest manor there was very little issues so we ended up three chesting the dungeon and out of the chest i actually ended up getting a gore crusted butcher's block which was a 44 eye level trinket that was uh that was awesome that actually ended up taking us to uh a total of 440 eye level so we then got into a plus eight dark heart thicket this group was actually a blast to play with and i honestly had probably the most fun that i've had on a pug in a long time with this group this group was actually a a full group of paladins so we had the prop uh prop tank the holy healer and then we had the Resper rep paladins obviously right so I, I actually had, I was so excited and I had so much fun in the first beginning stage of this that I actually forgot to record the trash leading up to the first boss. But from there, um, you can see where we started out. While playing, it, it actually looked hilarious to me. The amount of uh, hammers of light coming down, hitting the boss, all of the holy light that was going on, all the concentration that was happening. It, to me, it just looked hilarious. I loved it. It, sometimes it was hard to see what was actually going on on the screen due to all of the light that was on there. I, I'll tell you what about this first boss is I always forget about the charge mechanic that the boss has right until it's about to happen right and then but thankfully on this time I didn't get hit by it but I really need to keep that in mind for the future because that is something that will easily kill me right. As we were going through the trash and working through this dungeon I was really trying to work on my positioning for the pretty much the duration of this dungeon right i'm used to being a ranged dps so being a melee dps running these dungeons i i, I really wanted to focus on trying to work on this positioning um, i know especially on this dungeon it really matters because you can really screw yourself and your teammates if you get trapped behind the mushrooms i've also as we're going through the trash I, I was and also just the bosses in general i was really working on trying to make sure that i'm doing my interrupts i'm doing correct interrupts and going from there and i think that i did an okay job i i, I can always improve but i was really trying to work and trying to work through those interrupts so then we continued on to the second boss oak heart and other than standing in some strangling roots like a dummy right uh the boss we killed it super easily we then uh headed through the river and personally, I, I will say is I think that Dark Heart is one of the easiest Mythic Plus of the season, right? I think it's probably the easiest in my opinion. But I will say is that the river that has the eggs, right? I, it's it's probably one of the most annoying <laughs> mechanics in a dungeon. I always feel like I'm not even close to the eggs that I easily cleared them, right? But I at least always at least pop one egg. Looking back at the recording now while I'm editing and doing all this kind of stuff, right? I, I, I recognize that I really need to make sure that I know where I'm positioned for my divine storm because it shoots out that divine storm a little bit past where the mobs are. And there was a couple times that I'm pretty sure I was very close to pulling extra mobs when I didn't need to. And so that's something that I'm definitely gonna keep in mind for the future is just making sure that I don't pull extra with my divine storm. The third boss, Dressar, Dressaron, the the dragon, whatever his name is, right? He was killed super easily. There was nothing, nothing really of note to, um, for that fight. So then we went through, we killed the final boss, and it went super smoothly from there. Um, <laughs> it just still want to note all of the light that's going on on the screen, right? 
So we ended up three chesting this dungeon, which put us to a mythic eye level of 375. And one of the DPS had a 450 cloak that dropped for him, and um, it would have been a three level eye, a three eye level upgrade for us. But I checked his cloak, and he definitely needed it more. It was a, like a 20 um, eye level upgrade for him, so I didn't even ask. So then the paladin pals, right, uh, wanted to continue on. Um, we actually got a plus 11 throne of tides, and they wanted to keep going. So as we're going through the dungeon, I was beginning to feel a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more confident with the rotation, some of the defensives. I know I'm not utilizing the Paladin to its fullest ability, right? Right now, I'm still just trying to make sure that I'm not doing horrible on my rotation and try to keep my DPS up. But I was beginning to feel a lot more comfortable and just in general and also feeling better about doing interrupts and feeling that, that I was contributing to the team. So as we're going through the dungeon, we make it to the upstairs portion of the dungeon and we come to the room that the second boss is in, but first you have to clear out all the trash, right? I will say is that in my unprofessional and slightly okay at video games recommendation is that you line of sight this room if you're not already. I will say that anytime that I've been with a tank that hasn't attempted to line of sight this room is we always wipe every single time, I swear. But this tank ended up line of sighting this room and it went super smooth. And so, yeah, that's my recommendation as a slightly okay and unprofessional gamer right here. So we get to the first boss, Lady Nasjar. And I'll say is that the boss cast the Focus Tempest, right? And I 100% thought the boss was already summoning the first portion of ads. So I was looking around waiting for the ads to start. And uh, I realized, hey, you're being a dummy. I actually focus on the boss for a little bit. That being said, I'm gonna do my best to try to recognize when the boss does summon the ads right because i feel like whenever the boss summons the ads i always that's always when i pop my major cooldowns right where i'm sitting there and i'm i i've popped my big ones especially on my warlock it happens all the time so i'm going to try to focus and try to make sure that i recognize that a little bit better the healer did die during the first ad phase. Um, I don't think any of us really recognized that the healer was dead for a hot second because we were just passively healing each other, right? But um, I quickly, once I realized, I try, I battle res the healer. So we killed that boss and then we continued on to the second boss. And um, I almost died to the first pool of death because I wasn't paying enough attention. And I actually got the entangled affix on me right when that... Um, the ad got to me so i almost died there but thankfully the healer was paying attention was able to get me back up to full so as i was running away from the second pools of death right I, me and the healer were running together and i i accidentally just completely cut off the healer and almost killed the healer there so way to go solid a right after we killed the second boss we continued on and we went into the hallway where you have to dodge the eels right um, I don't know if I was thinking that I was on auto run or what what was going through my head here, but on the last eel, I was halfway through. I decided to that I, at that time I wanted to go ahead and start chatting with the uh, with my paladin pals, right? But due to that, is my character stopped and I stopped moving, and I tried I tried to hit my um, my mount ability, but it didn't matter. I still got hit and stunned. Thankfully. Um, I didn't get one shot by it, which was nice, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was going through my head there, but thankfully it didn't end up worse. Continuing on, I, I'm not dogging the tank here, but uh, whatever for whatever reason, I think that he wasn't really paying attention either, and he decided that we were going to go ahead and kill the last boss before the third boss. So instead of going to Mindbender, we went to the last boss. So in the area that leads up to the last boss, um, I'm... This, these pools here, if anybody can help me out and help me understand what's going on here, I I know I've wiped here and I'm still not sure from what. I, I know that players wipe here all the time, but what is it that kills players here? I know that a bunch of ads spawn, but is it just the ads that kill everybody? Because I'm, I'm not 100% sure, me personally. So if anybody can leave a comment and help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. So we then continued the last boss, killed it. It was not an issue at all, but we had to go, still had to go back to the Mindbender. In the hallway that leads up to the Mindbender, our heals actually died and then DC'd, and I was, I had a, I had a oh, oh no moment, right? But thankfully, the healer did just DC and was able to come back super quickly, so that way we could uh, keep going. So uh, as we were facing the last two of the faceless watchers, right, I learned something new about this dungeon is when they pull you into their AOE, right, 
is you most definitely cannot just walk backwards out of the AOE. You definitely need to strafe out of it. So just take it, take my expertise and don't try it yourself because you're not going to do it. You're going to die. I promise. So after I got res, we continued on to the mind bender. So the tank pulled the mind bender and I, I don't know, really know why we did this, but um, because we already had our enemy forces slain at that point. Um, but the tank did decide to pull the extra ads that were in the back. It wasn't that big of a deal. We ended up killing him without issue and continuing on with the boss fight, but it just seemed a little unnecessary to me. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not dogging on the tank too much, um, but just something to keep in mind for the future. So I don't know if the healer was lagging or what was really going on with the healer at this point, but he ended up dying to uh, one of the AOE abilities. So he was he was battle rezzed real quick, and uh, the, he ended up dying to the same ability again after that. Like I said, I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, I'm sure that he was lagging, especially with the disconnect earlier. So the healer died, and once again, I I don't know what was up with me. I probably just need to really focus that down and learn the utility of my class, but I panicked, and I didn't press a single utility uh, ability, right? I definitely could have avoided dying right here and possibly battle rezzed and save the dungeon right there but i didn't and i just died and we ended up wiping right so we ran it back and then the tank died and we ended up wiping again the third time we were finally able to kill the boss and ended up timing the dungeon we got a plus 149 on our mythic rating which put us at a 524 rating this was our first double digit key so even just timing it i, I think that we could have done a little bit better if maybe there weren't lags or whatever but it felt good to at least time it and get it um get it completed from the chest the tank actually got a 457 chest another dps said that he wanted it and i was like hey i could use that also right and i'll tell you what this was this was a really cool moment and this is one of the reasons why i love this game uh the other dps said that he wanted it i said that i wanted it too and i was like hey we can roll for it but the other dps looked at my gear and he goes ah nah you need it more than i do bud and he actually ended up just saying that I could have it. It, it was it was one of those good whole, good wholesome moments, you know what I mean? And I I, I appreciated it, and it, it felt good to be a part of that group there. So this once we got this chest, which was awesome, it was a good upgrade for us that put us at a 446 item level. After this dungeon, the Paladin Pals were done. We didn't continue on any more after this, but I used our flight stones and our crest to upgrade some of our gear. I upgraded our trinket to 450, our legs to 437, our gloves to 450, and that put us at an actual eye level of 450. We then got into a plus seven rise. We started with the first bit of trash, and I'll tell you what, it was really awesome to be able to interrupt the Spurlock, the Time Sworn Sentinel. As I'm sure you guys know, right, this dude jumps back and begins to pull the furthest player to him, uh, from him to his circle and causes a lot of damage, right? On my warlock my interrupt does not work on this guy because my interrupt is based through my pet so i've never really been able to interrupt this guy it's a pain in the butt to try to get him i'm not smart enough to be able to do that right but when we were fighting this guy it was really it felt very gratifying to be able to just walk in real quick and interrupt him before he could cause a lot of damage from here we continued to kill the trash and it was super easy and we moved on to tier so as we were fighting tier i never realized that as you're fighting tier when he uses all of his energy um the balls that spawn i did not notice i did not know that they gave you a haste buff up to five stacks i had no idea about that this is an awesome mechanic and um don't get me wrong is i always try to do my best to get it in the first place right but this is definitely going to i am definitely going to try to get all of the circles that i can from this point on right my team then got to participate in the worst part of the rise dungeon I'll tell you what, I was feeling very confident and thought I was going to make it through on my first try, but sadly I was unable to. I will say is that I've found a whole lot of luck trying to stick to the outside of the first and the last ring and running through the middle of the second ring. I was able to make it through on my second try. Once we made it through, I don't know if you know this or not, if you are one of the first to get through, what you can do is you can walk to the middle of the platform and begin the RP event of the dragons flying to you, right? If you start this event, you don't have to worry about them being pulled. It will just save your team a couple seconds, so that way once everybody gets through, you can just continue on and you don't have to wait for the dragons to fly to you. We then continued on and we went to the third boss or the second boss. A lot of people go to the um, time loss battlefield first. Um, I, I wasn't really paying attention and the tank had the artillery on him and I was just standing on the outside and I, I just died right there. That was my fault. I wasn't paying attention enough. 
then uh, the healer decided to B-res me, and I almost accepted it, but thankfully I didn't because the healer got the artillery on him, and if I would have accepted it, I would have just been in the middle of the artillery and died anyway. We then killed this boss with no issue and continued. Sadly, on our way to Morchi, the warlock ended up dying. I, I'm assuming that he got thrown off the platform, um, and so we had to wait, wait a whopping three minutes for this dude to get back. So as we're fighting Morchi, everything's going really smooth. But when she cast the familiar faces, I was standing next to a pool, so I just waited next to that pool, and the healer tried to get to the same one, but I got it first. And the healer ended up dying from this, which was, I, I felt horrible. But my B res was actually on cooldown, so I couldn't battle res him, right? Uh, but luckily, we were able to just complete the fight without the healer, um, and we were able to kill Morchi and move on. On the way to the last boss, the healer then got kicked off the side, uh, but thankfully we were moving on the last area so they could just res inside the new frozen area. We were then able to kill the last boss and we ended up actually two chesting the dungeon. This added 118 to our rating, which has put us at a 642. We also ended up getting a pair of uh, 450 item level legs, which was a 13 item level upgrade for us. This put us of a total at 451 item level. I then decided to upgrade our boots that we had to 444, which put us at an eye level of 452. So that's actually going to be it for this episode. Finishing out this episode, we are at a item level of 452. Um, so to start out this episode, we went ahead and opened up our Great Vault. In our Great Vault, we had the loop options of a Band of Callous Dominance, which was a 470 eye level. That was a 29 eye level upgrade for what we already had. A band of Twisted Bark, which was a 460, and it was a 19 eye level upgrade, and then a 441 back. It was pretty easy to go ahead and choose the 470 ring, but we sadly lost a lot of haste, but we gained a whole lot of crit. After equipping the ring, that put us at a 454 item level. So from here, we went ahead and killed the world boss, and we actually got the same neck that we got in the first week, but it just didn't have the socket. We completed the Ally of the Dream Wardens, we completed the Dream Seed, Super Bloom, and the Aiding of the Cord. So I decided to open up all the caches at the same time. Out of the Satchel of Dreams, we got a 441 head. Out of the Harvested Dream Seed cache, we actually got a 441 neck. Out of the cache of Blooming Treasures, we got a 441 Arctic Warden Sabatons. So this was actually a lower eye level than we already had, but the thing about this is it was a, um, a veteran level piece of gear, so we would be able to upgrade that to even higher than what we had currently. So while we were actually opening our caches, right, we actually got invited to a guild I did actually accept this, and I'm not going to be grouping up with any of the guildmates or anything like that, but the reason why I did accept this is because I wanted to get the faster hearth, right? I'm tired of waiting at the end of dungeons, waiting for my hearth to come off cooldown. So from here, we upgraded the boots that we just got to 447 item level, which put us at 454. So at the start of this week, we did start out with a 642 uh, mythic reigning, and we started our adventure this week with a plus 11 everbloom. We got into the plus 11 Everbloom, and I did the classic of the entering the dungeon without changing the difficulty, right? So everybody had to leave, and I had to change the difficulty to actually Mythic, and we went back in. So once we got into the dungeon, we actually started going through it, and I'll tell you what, is the monk was easily carrying us in DPS, and we were moving through the dungeon super quickly. At this time, I kind of want to talk about what I said earlier with the Raider IO, and I believe in full, full transparency, and I wanted to tell you guys about this. So I don't know why this happened, but when I started this challenge, I removed my character from my Raider IO profile, right? I unclicked the box on Raider IO. When I logged in to record this week's episodes, I saw that my main's mythic rating was on my paladin. It was showing. I don't know why it was doing this. It wasn't showing last week. It might have been because I was still too low of an eye level. I don't know what's going on with it, but I tried multiple times to go to raider.io and unclick it and click it, unclick it, save the profile to see if that would change anything, but it didn't do anything. So I think I think I waited for three or four days and I logged back into my paladin and it was still showing. So at this time, I made the decision to go ahead and I wanted to run keys for you guys and make an episode for you guys, but I am only running my keys. I will not be applying for any dungeons. I will not be applying for any groups. I will only be starting my own group and uh, getting applications from there. I know in the past is whenever I'm applying for groups, I don't really pay attention to the group leaders mythic rating. That's my personal. I never really pay attention unless I'm starting to get higher, right? But these are a couple low level mythic dungeons and I, I didn't really think that it would be too heavily considered so at this time this episode we are running dungeons 
with the myth with my mains mythic rating showing but they are only my dungeons i am doing the groups for them so all that being said right we continued on with the dungeon and we killed weatherbark with zero issue we continued on with the next trash and we killed the ancient protectors and we continued to the archmage soul right but i'll tell you what is the archmage soul fight was a rough one for me Towards the end of the fight, I had the glacial fusion ability actually formed two circles where I got trapped. If I re if I would have reacted to this ability sooner, I could have positioned myself a little bit better. But because of my a little bit of a late reaction, I got trapped with nowhere to go, and I got trapped and hit hit by the ice. But the ability happened again, and as soon as I saw the ability happening, I was trying to get into an area where I I could avoid it, right? But it made the perfect circle where I could not get out. But thankfully the heals was paying attention and made sure that I didn't die so we were able to continue on and kill the boss. So after we killed this boss and we were continuing on to the last bit of trash, after that was all killed, we actually still had 2% of enemy forces that needed to be killed, right? So we ran back and we killed this rock spine stinger. Sadly, after killing that, that only added 1% so we had to go and find another mob. So we went down to and killed this group, but sadly the healer didn't come with us and the mage DPS ended up dying. Uh, the tank and I almost died also, but thankfully we were able to live and kill the trash and so that way we could continue on to the boss. We then killed the boss with no issue and this actually gave us a plus 85 rating which put us at 727 mythic rating overall. So the tank actually got a 457 waste and we didn't really need it. It was only a three eye level upgrade for us, but the tank didn't need it at all so we, we were able to get it and able to equip it which was awesome. So out of the plus 11 Everbloom, we actually got a plus 14 Waycrest Manor. In this dungeon, when we were forming the group, I decided that I wanted to try to take a couple lower eye level people and a lower mythic rating people so that way we didn't get carried hard like we did last dungeon. In the last dungeon, the monk carried us pretty hard, so I, I was trying to even it out a little bit. That being said, is I think that I took a little bit too low of people. Um, our DPS for this dungeon was super low, and I don't think that everyone necessarily knew the fights. Um, everybody in the group was super chill and I actually had a great time, but we just didn't really have a whole lot of DPS and it, it definitely showed. So I will say is I felt pretty good about this dungeon. I felt like I was using my rotation and my ability and my utility and everything to not really the best of my ability, but I felt like I was growing as a rep paladin. I felt like I was doing better. I, I think that this was due to me not really relying on anybody else. I felt like I had to use everything to the best of my ability for us to continue on. And I will say is I think that that, that helped that helped me grow. I feel like it helped me grow as a rep paladin. So that, that was really cool to see. I felt I felt really good about everything that I was doing utility and everything wise. I will also say is that Spiteful is a whole lot worse to deal with as a melee DPS than a, than a ranged DPS, right? On my Warlock, I can just slow down the shades and run away from them, and it, it's not that easy as melee. It is very nice that I can use my hammer on my Paladin to stun them, but still at the same time is that you really have to watch out for it as melee DPS. I also downloaded a new nameplates profile for this dungeon. I didn't really like it, so in the next dungeon I did end up changing it. We almost wiped on the group leading up to the Soulbound Goliath, and on the trash in the courtyard, everyone but the tank died. I'm pretty sure this was mostly due to the group not interrupting as a whole, and I was also definitely guilty of this, and I could have done better with my interrupts. We then wiped on the trash in the courtyard closest to the Goliath. If you do not know, these mobs here cast Infected Thorn, and if you do not interrupt this ability, it causes a whole lot of damage to whoever, whoever it is targeting. So we went to the Goliath fight with 13 deaths in total. As we were fighting the Goliath, the hunter ended up getting soul thorns on them and was far away from the group. One of the things that I've learned as ranged DPS is that if you can get close to the group and you can kind of stack with the group, you're definitely going to be better off with the soul thorns. But before we were able to kill the soul thorns, the hunter died. And I could have used my mount ability to get there faster. It's just I'm still not used to having it at the moment. And I know that one of the things that I struggle with with using the mount ability is that I know that the rep paladin has a lot of ranged abilities. So like I was just trying to hit those and the hunter just ended up dying. So I battle res the hunter and we continued on with the fight. Sadly, the hunter got soul thorns on him again and he actually died again this time. I then got soul thorns on me and almost died. Uh, sadly, I used my shield earlier in the fight because I thought soul thorns was going to come on me, but it didn't actually hit me. So it was kind of a waste. They were able to take soul thorns off me, but then soul thorns got put on me again and I did die. Luckily, the tank and the he healer were able to kill the boss before the wipe. We then killed Rao with no issue and con continued on to the basement. This is where the dungeon fell apart. 
while we were trying to kill the first area of the basement, the group uh, ended up wiping twice. After wiping twice, the hunter left and the key was depleted from there. This was definitely not our best work in a dungeon overall, right? The group and myself could have played better, but I want to show you guys the bad along with the good. I don't want you guys to just see the good, so here, here's a bad one. After this, our 14 Waycrest Manor actually got depleted down to a 13, so we got a group together and started the dungeon. This run went a whole lot better and I felt like everyone knew the fights and we also didn't have to deal with Spiteful, which was all very helpful. At the beginning of this run, the tank did an awesome pull where he pulled a whole lot of mobs and we got to do some major DPS and that was a whole lot of fun. I will say is I try not to track my DPS with the Witch Sisters because I feel like everyone always sucks on DPS with these uh, in this fight, but we were able to kill the bosses very easily. The heals in one of the DPS ended up dying in the trash leading up to the Goliath, but we were able to then continue and kill the Goliath with zero issues. We were then able to go through the rest of the dungeons with a couple deaths, but no other real issues. Lord and Lady Waycrest died easily and we ended up three chesting the dungeon. This gave us plus 114 rating, which was put us at 841 mythic rating. We actually also got a 460 petrified witcher plate greaves from this chest. This put us at a 455 item level. From this, we also got a plus 16 rise. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I really didn't feel like we were ready for a plus 16, so I downgraded it to a 15. I honestly didn't feel like we were up for a 15, but I wanted to go ahead and try it. After this dungeon, I actually went to the gear upgrading person, right? And I wanted to upgrade some of our gear. I upgraded our weapon to 473, our chest, neck, helmet, rings, legs, and waist to 463 and then upgraded our shoulder and wrist to 447 and this actually ended up putting us at a 458 item level we then ran our plus 15 rise this was a good group and it was an easy group the tank also had this really cool owl appearance which i thought was awesome i've never seen that one before while fighting tier i made sure to at least get five orbs for that max haste buff that i was talking about last episode we then killed tier and we continued on to the the hallway where we have to run through the orbs right and i absolutely got destroyed i <laughs> i was not doing well on this one and it, it took a couple tries before i was able to make it through we then made it to the time loss battlefield so as we were killing the tank and it moved on it moves on to the second phase of the boss um we had a couple people die but sadly actually what the main thing is that the tank ended up disconnecting this really didn't seem intentional to me. Some of the guys thought it was, but sadly we waited for a while, but the tank did not come back. So this was our second key that got depleted for the week. We then got a group together and ran rise on 14. So for this dungeon, I realized that we didn't have any lust for the group, right? So I went to the auction house and I bought drums for the run. But as you'll see at the end of the dungeon, I didn't use it a single time, but it's the thought that counts, right? We went through the first half of the dungeon and we just had a single wipe, but there were no other issues besides that. We then got to the time loss battlefield um, fight, and I didn't know this before, but when fighting the final boss of this fight, right, whenever he kills some mobs on the battlefield, he gets a buff. So if you can, you want to kite the blade storm away from the gold mobs, and you want to face the shock wave from the mobs also. As you can see in this in this one, I didn't really do a jo good job, but it's a learning experience, right? As we were walking to the final boss, we actually watched the rogue get pushed off the platform by the swirlies. And I don't know if you know this, but you can't just wait for everyone to go through the portal, then res resurrect, and you'll actually resurrect into the icy cave area, so that way you don't have to walk all the way back. We then killed the final boss and only one-chested the dungeon. This gave us a plus 117 rating, which put us at a 958 mythic rating overall. We then used our crest from this dungeon and upgraded our weapon to 476. From this dungeon, we actually got a plus 15 Everloom, and we went ahead and got a group together and started the dungeon. So one of the things that I will say that sucks uh, just in general about this this week, right, is that I want to do dungeons that I haven't done on this affix. I want to be able to bump up our rating as much as we can. It's nice to be able to do high mythic level dungeons like the plus 15s and that kind of stuff, but I do want to do ones that we haven't been able to do. And so it would be nice to be able to apply for groups, but I just don't want to do that because my main is showing on my paladin. And yeah, it just kind of stinks. And I, I would I would love to really do the mythic dungeons that we haven't done. So that way you guys aren't seeing the same ones over and over and over again. Starting out our plus 15 Everbloom in true classic pug fashion, right? Three of us actually ended up dying to the first pull. It was a huge pull and it was a lot of fun, but three of us it did end up dying. So we started out with the dungeon with three deaths. 
But what I will say is everybody in the group was doing a lot of DPS and doing really well. This was also our first dungeon that had Spiteful back on in a minute, and so that was that was definitely it was definitely di difficult to deal with. After the first two mob groups, right, we actually had this really weird pull where we still had a naturalist and a dread pedal up top, and the tank tried to pull them down to the group of dread pedals at the bottom, but the naturalist was still up there casting choking vines and the other things, right? But we were able to kill the group. I don't even think that the tank technically knew that the naturalist was up there. I think that he just thought that he came down. So I will say is that this dungeon truly cemented the fact in my head that I hate Spiteful as a melee. It just sucks as a melee. Truly, I think I said it earlier, but on my Warlock, I'm able to just slow and walk away and continue DPSing. But as a melee DPS, Spiteful, you're just sitting there AoEing mobs and you may not even realize that you have a Spiteful on you just completely destroying your health. And it truly, yeah, just Spiteful as a melee, it truly sucks. There was times where I was getting groups together and they're like, hey, I think that we have a little bit too much melee. You might want to get some more ranged, like just saying. And I, I will say is that being, it gives me a new appreciation for being a melee DPS with Spiteful for sure. I'm definitely... I don't want to say I'm going to avoid it in the future, but it's definitely going to be kept in my mind in the future. And I will say is I've been really working on trying to use all my CDs appropriately and pretty much use them on cooldown, right? And I felt a huge increase in DPS. And I know it's crazy, right? Is I actually use my cooldowns and get more DPS. It's a crazy concept. On the Ancient Protectors fight, I am definitely going to have to get used to dealing with the positioning as a melee still. I found myself struggling to posi position myself around the pools of damage and still DPS. I also recognize that at the end of the fight is if I know when the ability is coming, I can run away from the boss a little bit. So I need to pay a little bit more attention there because it, I found myself not being able to attack the boss appropriately because there were pools all around the boss. But we were able to kill it and move on to the next trash. On the next trash, I ended up walking straight into one of the ice things and... Um, also not everybody, but was doing their best on interrupting mobs. I also could have done a whole lot better on my defensives, but I, it was hundred percent my fault. I just walked straight into it on the Archmage soul fight. The healer actually ended up dying close to the end of the fight where the boss was almost dead. And I think that honestly, when it comes down to it, I think the reason why he died is because he was healing me do because I was about to die because I suck and I was running through things and I was just getting a whole lot of damage. And so, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the healer died because he was trying to heal me. That being said, right, is I'm pretty sure that Archmage Soul fight is probably one of my least favorite fights at this point. I don't know if it's just because I ran Everbloom way too much this week or what, but I was not doing well by the end of it. I was getting hit by everything. So we're just finding out a bunch of things that we don't like this week. I, I guess that's the end of it. But once again, as we were coming up to the last boss and we killed all the final trash, we still had 2% again. Um, so we ran back and we really quickly were able to kill two of the stingers. I don't know why there was two stingers here this time and not the first time that we dealt with this, but there were two stingers here, so we were able to get the 2% really easily. So we killed the final boss and we actually ended up getting our Keystone Master achievement. Let's go. That means that we're done with the challenge, right? Nah, I'm just, I'm just kidding. It's the other Keystone Master achievement that we want. But we ended up completing this dungeon, which gave us a plus 53 rating to our mythic rating, and that put us at a total of 1,011 mythic rating. So we're almost halfway there. We actually received the waste that we received from the tank earlier when we ran the Everbloom, and it was the same item level, so we just sold that. After that dungeon, we ended up upgrading our ring to 473. So we then headed to the Revival Catalyst, and at this time we had eight of the abilities to transform some of our gear to tier gear so what i decided to do is i decided to transform the head i already had shoulders so i decided to do the chest and i did the boots but i'm a dummy and i forgot that boots don't apply to the tier set so i actually ended up having to tra uh, transform the legs to tier set also to get the four set so i kind of looked at what the tier set does for paladins and so paladins have an ability called expurgation which is a passive ability that causes your blade of justice to burn the target for 37,000 damage over nine seconds right what your two set does is it causes your expurgation to last an additional three seconds and deals 30 percent increased damage also when casting judgment or divine toll on a target expurgation causes wrathful sanction wrathful sanction is an ability that condemns an expurgated enemy what this does is it deals 100% of your attack power to holy damage to the target and up to four nearby enemies. 
So then we also got our tier, our four tier set, which allows for Wrathful Sanction to grant Echoes of Wrath. And what Echoes of Wrath does is that this causes our Templar Verdict or Divine Storm to deal damage a second time at 25% effectiveness, and it doesn't consume our Judgment. So we got our tier set, and I'm really excited for the future to be able to test this out and see how much our DPS increases or what that feels like. So this is actually going to be the end of the episode. We end today with a mythic rating of 1011 and we also end with an eye level of 458. Last episode we dealt with a little raider IO issue and thankfully we logged in for the weekly reset and the problem was fixed and we were able to continue the challenge like normal. So for the start of this episode we are sitting at an eye level of 458 and a mythic rating of 1011. So first things first we went and opened our weekly vault. We were graced with a Nightmare Eggshell Trinket, which was a 476 item level. We also had the option to take a Great Belt of Disruption with an item level of 470. The easy choice for this week was the 476 Trinket, and that took us to an item level of 460. For this week, we are going to have the affixes of Tyrannical, Storming, and Raging. Also, I have a little bit of a challenge for you guys this episode. Whoever can guess the right amount of tornadoes I get hit by, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll give you a cookie because it, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a good, it's double digits easy. Moving on, this week we didn't get anything from the world boss. We also didn't get anything of note from the Dream Seed, Super Bloom Cash, Aiding the Record, or the Dream Warden. After this, we got straight into some Mythic Pluses, and boy, do we do a whole lot of dungeons for this episode. Our first dungeon we got into was a plus 15 Everbloom, and honestly, this group was really good, but us being the awesome paladin we are, we sat on top of the damage meters for most of the dungeon. In the first couple pulls, I'm pretty sure that I got hit by absolutely every single tornado that was spawned, so I was honestly flopping around like a fish. But other than some awesome DPS on our part, it was a smooth run up until the first boss. After we cleared the trash around Witherbark, the tank tried to pull Witherbark and the adds into the boss area, so that way we could DPS down the adds at the same time as we were fighting Witherbark. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the devs fixed this so that way you can't do this anymore. And if anybody knows, leave a comment down below and let me know. I, I, I think that I could be right, but I could also be wrong about that. So what ended up happening was half the group was stuck inside the boss area with the boss, right? And the tank and the other half of the group was stuck with the adds. And so us special ones that were in the boss area died pretty quickly. But after a quick reset, we were able to go back to fighting Witherbark. And honestly, on the Witherbark fight, we didn't really do the mechanics correctly, and a whole lot of the roots were well away from the boss. So a lot of globules actually made it to the boss, but thankfully we were able to kill Witherbark. We then killed the Ancient Protectors easily and moved on to the trash before the Archmage. And I know for a fact that I've said it before, but the Archmage soul boss and the trash leading up to it is probably my least favorite fight of the season. On the trash leading up to the Witherbark, I did, I ended up getting hit by the Ice Circle and almost died. But after that, we moved on to the Archmage fight. And I'll tell you what, as I was really focusing here, I was really trying to make sure that I did the mechanics correctly and I didn't mess up. And for the fight, we did a pretty good job of dodging all the mechanics. But one of the times the Archmage did cast the ability for the Ice Circles, I did dodge it and I moved away, but sadly I still got pulled by the mechanic. I don't know what ability specifically pulls you, but that ability did pull me into the Ice Circle and I, I got hit by the ice. But other than one of the mages dying and getting battle res, we were able to kill the boss and move on. If you have watched my previous episodes, then I'm sure that you guys can see that my UI has like completely changed, right? I wish I could tell you I spent a whole lot of time customizing and try to make it look really clean, but honestly, that would be a little bit of a lie. What I did do is I copied what Dillison did. I know I gave Dillison a shout out before, but if you have not watched his videos, I highly recommend them. He makes some awesome videos and they're very entertaining. But Dillison has a video that shows you how to set up this UI step by step. And if you like the way it looks and you want to emulate it, I will leave a link for that video down in the description of this video. One of the cool things that the setup and the add-ons allow me to do is it allows me to see the group's interrupts and their big abilities next to their name. So that way I can kind of keep track of what's going on with the group and I know if I need an interrupt or if someone else has an interrupt or anything like that. Also at times in this video, you might see some errors pop up. Right now, I don't know what this is and I don't really know what's causing this, but it happened a lot and it was super annoying, but I really just wanted to play the game, right? And I also wanted to get a video out to you guys. So I kind of ignored it for this video, but what's weird is that it's only happening on my Zandalarian troll. It's not happening on any of my other characters. So I don't know if it's a Paladin issue or if it's a Zandalarian troll issue, but I will try to figure out for future episodes. As we were fighting the last boss of Everbloom, he actually got down to 9% when he began to cast his Genesis ability and the petals began to form on the ground. 
The tank then went to clear the pedals and he accidentally walked straight off the cliff and died. So the rest of us just tried to DPS down the boss as fast as we could. As it became a little bit more clear that we weren't going to kill the boss in time, I tried to start clearing the pedals. Then all the ads spawned from the uncleared pedals and the boss and the ads all aggroed onto one of the mages, but thankfully we were able to kill the boss and clear the dungeon. After completing the dungeon, it added 71 to our mythic rating, which put us at 1,082 mythic rating overall. So then we continued on to the next dungeon, which was a plus 14 Atal Dazar. The first boss, Razan, went down like the giant chicken he is, and we continued on through the trash. On the trash leading up to Volcal, Volcal, I don't really know how to say it, but we'll just say Volcal. I got hit by Tornado and landed directly into one of the hex circles, so I became my own little chicken for a moment. But then we continued on to Volcal. Especially in a pug environment, this fight can be a little rough. While killing the totems, I saw one of the other DPS was falling behind, so I backed off on my DPS a little bit, right? I think I pulled back on my DPS just a little bit too much because then my totem was the last one left and I didn't get it killed in time. Thankfully after this, the totems reset and we were able to kill the totems at the same time and continue on with the fight. And I'll tell you what, this fight is so much easier as a melee DPS. All you have to do is walk while you're doing your rotation. On my main, I have to cast ability and then take a step, cast ability, take a step and repeat on and on for the entire fight. So I had so much more fun on this fight than I've had in a while. As we moved on, there was nothing of really note on the dungeon except for us pumping some huge numbers in the trash before the priestess. I think that we got up to 400,000 DPS during that fight. The priestess fight went pretty smoothly other than one time we didn't kill one of the adds fast enough and he actually got to one of the pools that hel helps you through transfusion. So what I did is I let everybody else grab a pool and I popped my bubble to pre prevent the damage from transfusion. After killing the priestess, we continued to Yasma. And honestly, just the same as the Volcal fight, this fight is so much easier as a melee DPS. As long as you have a good tank that rotates Yasma appropriately as a melee DPS, all you have to do is follow and do your rotation. It was awesome. I had so much fun. The only thing that you really have to worry about is you really have to pay attention to when the solo ability starts so that way you can get away from the boss. Towards the end of the Yasma fight, both of the other DPS ended up actually dying. And I went to battle res them, but because of my new UI, right, I forgot to put my battle res ability on my bars. So while I was trying to dodge spiders, I had to go into my spellbook and throw my ability on my bar. I was then able to battle res the other DPS and we were thankfully able to kill the final boss. But I felt like kind of a big dummy, right? Because one of the main reasons to bring a paladin, right, is the battle res and the other utility. And I wasn't even using that for this dungeon. So completing this dungeon actually added 197 to our rating, which put us at 1279 rating overall. We then got into a group for a plus 15 fall. And let me just start off by saying this dungeon was, it was just wowzers. I don't even know how to explain it other than that. It was a rough one. So to start out before we even got into the dungeon, last episode, I actually bought 20 feasts from the auction house. I did this because, you know, I want to help the group and also who doesn't like seeing bigger numbers, right? But all that being said, me being the classic derp that I am, I bought the hoarding of draconic delicacies. If you've never seen this one before, there's a good reason for it. The freaking feast is one of the ones that you have to pitch in all the other food that you can get to get the buff. So you truly hate to see it, right? I highly recommend that you don't buy this one unless like everybody in your group knows. And thankfully you guys don't have to make the same mistakes that I did and you can just learn from my derpiness. So onto the actual dungeon. When we started the dungeon, the tank was doing some very small pulls. And I remember thinking, ah, oh, this is a little weird. But hey, if the tank wants to make small pulls, the tank makes small pulls, right? That's just the pugging environment. You have to follow what the tank does. That being said, we got to the first boss and it became pretty apparent what was going on. So while fighting the first boss, we actually ended up wiping due to no one soaking the jump mechanic. I honestly wasn't too worried about the first wipe because, you know, mistakes happen. It's not that big of a deal. But as we were running back, the group started talking about the fight and I realized that they didn't know the mechanics. At this point, it would have been super easy to leave, right? But I wanted to try to stay and stick it through and see if we could complete the dungeon. So I just tried to tank the soaks so that way we could move on to the next part of the dungeon, right? But we had a couple people that were pulling the circles super far away and I wasn't able to get to them in time. So we ended up wiping again. I will say is that I don't really have an issue if we don't time the dungeon. Don't get me wrong, I want to three chest every dungeon that I'm a part of, but I, as long as we complete the dungeon, I'm happy. So I explained the mechanics and I went through everything and we tried again and we wiped again. So I didn't know this at the time and I will learn this later, but with my new UI, my battle res looks like it's always on cooldown. 
what's happening here is that it's just on cooldown until I get another one. So it's just counting down until I get my second one, right? And I could have used my battle res to try to complete this fight. But I learned this later and I actually use it later to how it's supposed to be used. And good gosh, I think at this point my derpiness counter for this video is at like five or six. So we tried again and I messed up because I saw another person run into the soak area. So I backed off of it, but the other person did the exact same thing and we ended up wiping because none of us actually soaked the mechanic. At this point, I kind of resigned myself to the fact that we were not timing this dungeon, but the group was pretty cool and I was willing to continue as long as we kept trying to move along. With another wipe under our belt, we finally freaking did it. We finally killed the first boss. So we moved on from the first boss with 27 deaths and 12 minutes left to time the dungeon. I'm not going to bore you with the details from the second boss, but we ended up wiping three times before we managed to kill it. Then we made it to the third boss. And honestly, at this point, it was proven that no one knew the mechanics of the dungeon, right? And instead of trying to figure out the mechanics, the tank just full sent it as soon as the boss spawned and immediately attacked it. And can you guess what happened? Yep, absolutely. You in the back, you are right, we wiped. So after the wipe, instead of waiting before we pull the boss again, the tank just sent it again without asking anything or the mechanics or anything. So at this point, after that second wipe, I called it. I couldn't do it anymore. We were sitting at 54 deaths for the dungeon and we've been in there for over an hour. So I just had to call it quits and that key ended up being depleted. All this being said, one of the reasons why I'm doing these videos is one, because I'm having a great time and I, I appreciate everybody's support and everything like that, right? But also I wanna show how much fun pushing Mythic Plus Keys is and I hope a lot more people start participating and having a good time with it. But help your fellow people out, help your group out, right? I would much rather spend five minutes waiting before we start the dungeon if you're unsure of the fights and mechanics and that kind of stuff. There are videos that pretty much explain the mechanics to a T that you can watch in under five minutes. After this dungeon, I applied for group after group after group and was unable to get into anything. I think I applied for dungeons for close to 30 minutes with no luck. So we made our own group with our plus 15 dark heart thicket key. While we were waiting for people to join our group, I upgraded some of our gear. I upgraded our feet to 450, our wrists to 450, our shoulders to 457, and our helmet to 467. That put us at an item level of 461 overall. So once we got everybody into our group, we started the dungeon. And after this last group, this group was an easy group and it went by extremely smoothly. The first couple bosses went down with no problem and we only had one stupid death from me on Oakheart. After Oakheart, I threw my final reckoning into the trees on the ceiling like the pro gamer I am. To pour salt in the wound, I got hit by a tornado and I got deleted by a big swirly pool of death from the Blood Fury. We were then able to kill the final boss and still had 3% left of enemy forces. So we poured it out and poured it back in. Once we killed the final mobs, we ended up adding 80 to our mythic score and that put us at a 1359 overall. So we did end up getting a 463 trinket from the chest at the end of the dungeon. But sadly, it's the exact same trinket we got from our vault, so we couldn't equip it. From the chest, we also got a plus 17 fall. I then went to Valdraken really quick and I upgraded our helmet to 470. We then got a group together for our plus 17 fall. On the first poll, I was super excited and I actually got to pump some pretty good numbers, but the unholy death knight decided to absolutely freaking break the game. It was topping out at 700 some K DPS, which was freaking insane. We then went through the first boss and killed it with no issue. And I don't want to dog the last group that I went through the fall with. Everyone is new to the game at some point. I'm good with learning and trying to teach the mechanics. I don't care if you're new to the game and you're trying to learn, I want to help promote positivity and helpfulness in the game. But it was super nice to play with people that knew, right? And we could do the mechanics with zero issues and continue on. So we were then able to move on to manifested time waves. So if anybody can help your boy out. As a melee DPS, I always feel like I'm horribly positioning myself in this fight. Do you guys know of a better way to position yourself so that way when you move it doesn't feel so awkward? I don't know, maybe I can start trying to run the other way, which would make it a little bit better. One of the cool things about this challenge and making these videos is that I do feel like I'm gaining a lot of knowledge and growing as a player. I feel like I've been consistently getting better at WoW throughout this season and this challenge has helped me grow exponentially, honestly. So as we were fighting the boss, I did end up actually getting chrono faded on me. So I then ran to the fast portion of the fight so that way I could get dispelled. And I thought I did get dispelled, but it was the other person. So I then went back to the slow area and I got dispelled when I was there, which almost caused a wipe. Thankfully, we were able to kill the manifested time waves and we were able to move on. We tried to do the dragon skip, but we failed miserably. I and another person just died and we actually ended up just rezzing into the new area. 
as we were heading to the last boss, we shrouded the last group of ads, and I think this is such a cool ability that was added to the game. I never really see a lot of rogues, but this is always really cool when I see it and we get to use it. On the last boss, I ended up getting absolutely demolished by some earth spikes, but we finished the dungeon and we were able to gain 231 to our mythic rating, which put us at a 1590 rating overall. So this dungeon was the last dungeon we needed for our weekly event of completing mythic dungeons. So I opened up the cache and I got a pair of lava forged soilerettes or whatever, however you say them. These had an item level of 470 and were a 20 item level upgrade for what we currently had. This put us at an overall item level of 463. We then got into a plus 15 Waycrest Manor, and I don't know if this is just me, but like, is anybody experiencing some extremely long load times in WoW? I feel like the load times for going into areas has significantly increased lately. But moving on to the actual dungeon, on one pull the tank didn't get full aggro on all the mobs before I started attacking, so I ended up actually dying. The Witch Sisters then went down super easily. In the courtyard, the healer ended up getting fully deleted by something, and I, I don't really know what it was, but I also ended up dying to a ground ability. To me, I thought I was most definitely far enough away from this ability, but obviously I wasn't, and I need to remember to put more distance in the future. We moved on to Goliath, and I don't know why I never use Blessing of Protection on Soulthorns. For whatever reason, I cannot freaking remember to do it. But we ended up wiping and I decided to use my bubble ability after everyone had already died so I stayed alive for another whopping 4 seconds. At this point the derp counter for this video is in double digits right so I'm sorry that you guys are having to see all this horribleness. But we were able to kill the goliath on the second pull. Once we got down into the basement the tank did some really weird positioning for the soul charmers. He positioned everybody at the top of the stairs which made it nearly impossible to see what was going on. But we finished the pull. And we were able to kill the last boss finishing the dungeon which added 61 to our mythic rating which put us at 1651 overall. We then delved into a plus 15 black rock hold. This was an awesome group and everyone had good numbers and it felt super smooth. And I will say as I remember thinking in this dungeon, at this point I've been having so much fun playing my paladin. At some points I, I even forgot that I was trying to record for this video right and I just kept playing and having a good time. Normally I try to take notes at the end of dungeons for recording so it makes it a little bit easier but I completely forgot for all these dungeons. And honestly, I'm having a little bit more fun and I'm, a, and I'm a little bit more invested in my Paladin than I am my main. And I don't know, I might have to sit down and consider switching mains at one point. And I also feel like I'm doing more and better consistent damage with my Paladin than I am my Warlock. And honestly, my Paladin has a lower item level than my Warlock. So I don't know if that's just because Paladins are OP right now or what. But back to the dungeon, we continued with the dungeon and honestly had no deaths or no major issues. We killed the first two bosses with no deaths and continued on to the third boss. On the third boss, we had Hateful Gaze put on us twice in a row, and we actually ended up dying on the second Hateful Gaze. I had Divine Shield up, so I could have used that, but I kind of panicked at the time. We honestly then finished the dungeon like it was nothing, and we also had some pretty good freaking DPS overall if I say so myself. After completing the dungeon, 149 was added to our Mythic score, which put us at 1800 overall. The tank got a trinket from the chest. And because he's a certified good guy and he didn't need it, he traded it to us. So we ended up getting the Ember of Nullification, which had a 463 item level, which replaced our 450 trinket we had. This trinket also had both strength and versatility, which was awesome. It didn't increase our item level, but it was still a huge upgrade. The next dungeon we got into was a plus 15 rise. The first pull was a little bit of a rough one for us. At this point, I think I'd been running Mythic Pluses for a little bit too long, right? And I wasn't exactly playing at my best. We were getting hit by abilities and other things that I knew better and I should have been able to, to ignore or, or dodge. We almost died on the first pull, but I was able to shield and stay alive and thankfully our healer was really good for this dungeon and he kept me from dying for pretty much all of the dungeon. As we were going through tier, he was on 4% when he summoned his orbs again. I used my bubble to try to run through the damage area to collect all the orbs so no one else had to, but as I was leaving the damage area, I got pushed back by tier into the gold area and I actually ended up dying. Also when Tyr summoned his orbs, we also pulled adds that were still on the platform that we hadn't killed yet, and we ended up wiping with Tyr on freaking 0%. We then ran it back and killed Tyr in almost record time. We then made it to the tank fight, and on the first artillery I decided I was going to stay in the same spot and pop my bubble, right? And I mean it worked, but I came to regret that the next time the tank used the artillery ability, because whoever had it on them I got into the perfect position where it destroyed absolutely everything that I believed in. After I died, I wasn't getting battle rest, so I just released and tried to head back. I was able to get there before the final boss of the fight, and we were able to kill it and move on. 
Morchi died easily with just a mage dying from familiar faces. On the final boss, the boss was on 0% and I ended up dying to the infinite corruption at the same time as the boss died. We timed this dungeon and it added 36 to our mythic rating which put us at a whopping 1836 overall. I then ran to Valdraken and really quickly and I upgraded our helmet to 476. And this is going to be the end of our episode for this week. I know the video is coming out a little later than I would have liked, but you know, real life responsibilities and such take precedence. At the end of this week, we are sitting at a mythic rating of 1836 and an overall item level of 464. Beginning of this challenge, we had a mythic rating of 1836 and an item level of 464. So as always, we're going to start out with our weekly vault. From our vault, we had the options of a porcelain crab trinket with an item level of 476. This was a 13 item level upgrade for us. We also had the option of an unwinding Eon Girdle with an item level of 476, and this was also a 13 item level upgrade. This was a difficult choice. Both pieces of gear were a 13 item level upgrade, and this was a pretty good trinket. Also, both items were a hero piece of gear and would replace a champion level gear. What I ended up doing is I decided to take the waste due to the fact that we would lose a lot of versatility if we replaced our trinket, and it's kind of the same upgrade anyway. This put us at an item level of 465, and we also got a plus 17 Atala Dazar from the vault. So while I was equipping the waste, I actually saw that we no longer had our four set. So I grabbed a pair of pants that we attempted to replace last episode. I put those pants back on and that brought us back to our four set. The pants that we attempted to replace them with had better stats, but they were the same item level so it wasn't that huge of a deal. We then got into a plus 17 black rock hold. In this dungeon, we actually had two other paladin DPSs. This wasn't as awesome as our five man paladin group from episode two, but it was still pretty fun and funny. We got to see some hammers raining down on some mobs and some bosses again this episode and I think looking back it will always bring a smile to my face. Also last episode we were dealing with a little bit of an issue regarding an error that was popping up on our screen. And yeah I didn't do anything to fix this, that's 100% my bad, I 100% honestly meant to sit down and figure out what was going on but then you know I started playing, I started having fun and I completely forgot about the error. It's, it's honestly sad because by the end of recording this episode clearing the error just became a second nature. But I will make this promise as I will do everything in my power to fix this error before the next one if there is one. But enough of that, back to the actual gameplay. Towards the end of the boss I got the soul of Echo's ability placed on me and your boy messed up. For some reason I decided to turn around and run back into the pools that were left behind and ended up getting feared. After being feared we were super close to dying but thankfully I was able to pop the bubble and I didn't die. But wowzas was it a close one. Just some foreshadowing for the rest of this episode we have a lot of close ones. Moving on one of the paladins got deleted on the stairwell with the spiders and I'll tell you what I don't know if it's this dungeon the concentration on the ground or what but sometimes it is super hard to see the impact area of the shockwave from the champions. I really just had to rely on deadly moss bobs to scream at me when this ability was going off and run away to make sure I didn't get hit by it. A little side note for this dungeon is look at all these hammers hitting this boss. This will always crack me up. I think it looks awesome. I did end up getting the laser beam on me twice in a row during the second boss so my DPS was pretty horrid. But hey when it comes down to it there's only the entire internet that could judge me for my horrible gameplay right so it's no big deal. After the second boss, we moved it on the trash and one of the paladins ended up actually getting to 800k DPS. It was absolutely insane. Later in this episode, we pushed some pretty good numbers, but this was still baffling to me. As we were moving along, the last two ads before the big staircase absolutely destroyed my group's hopes and dreams. I have no idea why they were able to do this. They were stunned for most of the fight, so they weren't able to use their big buff ability. Once they came out of their stun, they just went on an absolute rampage on the group. After the wipe, we came back and we were able to knock him out easily though. We were able to very slowly, and I do mean very, very, very slowly, go up the stairs to the third boss. I think it took three minutes to make it to the third boss from the start of the stairs. On the third boss, I did get annihilated by a hateful gaze. I had my blessing protection up, but if you guys know me at this point, I apparently have an inability to use this ability, so it shouldn't be a surprise that I didn't use my defensives. Also, one thing, a lot of people left a lot of awesome and good tips, and I seriously greatly appreciate you. That being said, I have heard and read all of your tips, but the first part of this episode was recorded before that video was even published. So if I still suck, you know why. I promise I do a lot better later in the episode, but just wanted to kind of explain that. We were able to kill the last boss, and we ended up two-chesting the dungeon. This added 59 to our rating, which put us at an overall rating of 1859. So sadly after this we weren't able to play anymore for the weekly reset. So a couple of days later we logged in for another week. 
One of the upsides of this is we got to log in and we got to open up another vault. We had the option to take a 476 helmet. This was the same item level that we already had, but it was a hero level item, so we could upgrade it further in the future. We took the helmet to the Revival Catalyst so that we could turn it into a piece of tier gear. After this, we went ham on some dungeons. So we didn't get to fill in the dungeons that we hadn't completed on the other affix. But for the rest of this episode, we will be dealing with Tyrannical, Incorporeal, and Spiteful. And good gosh, was this a rough one. So the first one we got into was a plus 12 Throne of Tides. I know it's a low level dungeon, but it had been a minute since I played, so I wanted to play a quick easy one to get back into the swing of things. And well, that is what I thought at the very least. Throughout this dungeon, the tank wasn't really keeping aggro the best. I don't know if this was an issue with me not allowing him to get aggro before attacking or what it was, but it was a little rough. On the plus side of this is I definitely got to use my defenses and got some practice in using them. I did notice that whenever I use my defensives, I always use both of my low cooldown defensives at the same time instead of spacing them out. In the future, I'm going to try to space those out further so that way I'm not just wasting both of them at the same time. We started out this dungeon pretty smoothly until we got to Commander Uthok. While fighting the boss, I actually got knocked back into the adds that were still in the room. I wasn't paying the best attention here and I completely forgot about them and it ended up killing me and the healer. Thankfully, after we both died, the adds reset and the tank and the other DPSs were able to kill the boss so that way we could move on. We started the last boss with 15 deaths and 11 minutes to complete the dungeon. And I'll tell you what, we kept wiping on this boss. Most of it was due to the fact that no one was killing the adds fast enough and no one was interrupting the ink blast ability. So we ended up wiping actually twice before we were able to time the dungeon. This added a whopping 9 to our mythic rating and that put us at 1904 mythic rating overall. After this, I upgraded our wrist to 457, our weapon to 480, and our neck to 467. This put us at a 466 item level overall. We then got into a group for our plus 17 Atala Dazar. While we were waiting, I bought more corrupting potions and I also bought 20 grand banquets of the Kaluka? Kalu Kaluak. So the start of this dungeon was a little strange. Normally people run to the right and run straight to Razan, right? The tank in this one went left instead of right. I don't think I've ever actually seen this area of the dungeon before, so it was a little weird for me. On the fight with Razan, one of the shamans got pursuit put on them and got gobbled up super quick. I tried to put blessing on him, but I didn't get it off in time. Editing me, looking back at this now, and how many times I've said blessing protection and how I haven't used it appropriately, I'm going to change where this ability is located so that way I can actually try to use this when I'm supposed to. At this point, I'm tired of saying it, so I'm actually going to try to fix it so that way I don't have to freaking say this anymore. So on the pursuit directly after that one, the other shaman actually ended up dying. This is one of the few times in this challenge that I've actually missed my warlock. Most of the time whenever we are on Razan, I throw my portal down so that way everyone has a quick escape and they can get away from the boss. And everyone was struggling with the pursuit ability in this dungeon. As we killed Razan, the tank ended up dying directly after Razan was dead. Looking back at the footage now and looking at it now, I'm still not even sure 100% what he actually died to. After the tank was rezzed, we then went right to head up to the priestess. And on a very personal level, I much preferred to head left towards Volkal instead of heading up to the Priestess. Does anybody know, is there is there a benefit to actually heading towards the Priestess first instead of heading to Volkal? In my experience, we always wipe heading towards Priestess. And I feel like we only wipe sometimes heading to Volkal and I feel like it's a little bit easier. And boy was my feeling right. On the group up the stairs, somehow extra mobs actually got pulled so I ended up dying. The tank was still up, so I ran back as quick as I could to try to help out and almost immediately died again. The group did end up fully wiping and we had to reset. After we reset, on the next pull, we almost wiped again due to the affix destabilizing us, but luckily we were able to pull it out and move on. After we moved up the stairs, I then sadly died from a shade from the spiteful affix right before the priestess. After getting rezzed, we started the priestess fight. So the tank pulled the priestess down off the platform so it was super far away from that where the ad spawned. I think the tank in this group was a newer tank because they kept taking the boss further and further away from the platform. This ended up being a super long fight and after three and a half freaking minutes we finally killed the boss. We moved on from the fight with 14 minutes left and two bosses to take down. Now I'll tell you what, if you thought the priestess fight was a rough one, I know you guys didn't see much of it, but three and a half minutes is a long time, right? But if you thought the priestess fight was a rough one, Volkal was even worse. 
Our first wipe was before we were even able to take down the totems. After the reset, we then had one person that was just deciding to DPS down the totems as fast as possible without any regards to the other totems. So we ended up killing the totems not once, not twice, but three freaking times before we finally had to freaking stop and reset. It was a huge pain in the butt. It was actually insane. At one point, the DPS killed the totem when the other two totems were above 50%. It was, it was nuts. I don't know what was going on with the DPS, but after the reset, I was trying to explain the fight and they just kept saying one person died at the same time. It was, uh, it was extremely infuriating. At this point, we were most definitely not timing this dungeon, but at least wanted to try to complete it and hopefully get a piece of gear from the chest. Thankfully, after a reset, we were able to kill the totems at the same time and take down full call. We then continued on to Yasma. After one wipe, we tried again. The positioning of this fight was a little rough and I felt like I was running around like crazy to try to avoid the spiders. At one point, all the DPS ran away from the tank and the tank decided to come with us. Yasma then hit all the souls and it caused a wipe. After this, we were actually able to kill Yasma and complete the dungeon. Sadly, it didn't add to our rating or anything, but hey, at least we completed the dungeon, right? After this dungeon, I then put a gem into my neck socket so that way you guys would stop making fun of me in the comments. I, I, I'm really just playing. I do greatly appreciate all your guys' tips. I don't even know how long we actually applied for groups, but we didn't get into anything and so we started our own group. We ended up getting a group together in like five freaking seconds for our Blackrock Hold 16. On our first poll, we got to do some pretty good DPS and we were close to hitting 400k DPS. So I was feeling pretty confident and good about this dungeon. We ended up making it to the first boss with only one death. I wish I had more to say about the rest of this dungeon, but this group was super solid and we killed the first boss and the second boss super easily. We then had a huge pull in the hallway with the tricksters and we almost hit 600k freaking DPS, which was awesome. I was super stoked. On the huge pull, the death knight ended up actually dying to a spiteful shade, so I feel you man, I hate this freaking affix. We continued on to the next trash and we were still staying at like 400k DPS and I was, I was honestly feeling huge. I know I've said it before in other videos, but honestly, I was really feeling good about the Paladin. Other than not being able to use my Blessing of Protection ever, I feel like I've been doing a really good job with the rotation and was feeling super competent. And on a better point, I was having a blast. I was pumping some huge numbers for most of the time, and I'm, as I'm sure you know, more DPS means more fun, right? The tank ended up dying to Hateful Gaze at the exact same time as the boss died, which was pretty funny to me. I don't know what was up with everybody dying as soon as the boss died on this episode, but it felt like it happened a lot. We then moved on to the trash before the last boss, and especially as a paladin, it can be extremely hard to see their AoE stun. When concentration is on the ground, it mixes with the AoE zone, so that way it can be extremely difficult to decipher where exactly it is. We were then able to kill the last boss and we ended up three chesting this dungeon and it had a whopping three to our rating, which put us at 1907. We did end up getting a plus 18 throne of the tides from the chest. So from the chest, the tank actually got a pair of 463 item level Ravencrest Bone Crush Gauntlets. Try to say that five times fast, right? This was a 13 item level upgrade for us and this saint of a man or a woman gave them to us. This was a huge freaking upgrade for us and put us at an overall item level of 467. We then left the group and once we got back to Valdrek and we upgraded our weapon to 483. We then got a group together for our plus 18 Throne of Tides. On the first pull, we did some pretty good DPS, but the Demon Hunter made us look like a chump. As we were continuing through, we actually wiped on the first scavenger because no one, myself included, was doing anything about the affix. I'm not going to lie, I was so focused on trying to catch up to the demon hunter, I just completely forgot the affix was a thing. In the hallway, just after the water elevator, me and the demon hunter actually ended up both hitting over 600k DPS, but he still sadly beat us, but god was it close. So I will say is, at this point in the video, I have read your comments and I have at attempted to implement your guys' tips. I personally think it shows. I've been trying to stay a little bit further away from the mobs and the bosses and all that fun stuff. Plus my DPS has gone through the roof. So I just want to say thank you to you all. Everyone that left a comment trying to help, I seriously greatly appreciate you. We then made it to the Nazjar fight and good gosh, this felt hectic as heck. I almost died to the electrical shockwave ability and then almost died again when the ad spawned directly after. I don't know if it was just me or what, but I felt like there was a crazy amount of AoE pools that spawned during the ad phase. I felt like I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. But thankfully we were able to move on to Commander Uthok. And honestly, I thought the Nazjar fight was hectic, this one was even more so. 
Thankfully, the tank decided to kill the entire room before we killed the first boss, so we didn't have to worry about pulling any ads while fighting this boss, which I seem to do every time. The healer died on the first shockwave and we were able to battle rest them. And I will say is that if the group does not know this fight, it can be super rough, but once you learn that you have to position the boss between you and the ads, it makes this fight a whole lot easier to deal with. As we were moving along, I almost died due to being trapped by the pools, but thankfully we were able to live with like 5% health left. After Uthok went down, we were able to move on to the third boss. And other than the healer dying to the pull mechanic, we had zero issue getting to that boss. On the last boss, both of the other DPS ended up dying, and sadly, my battle res was on cooldown. After they died, we continued and tried to knock out the boss, and we got it to 12% before we wiped. We honestly just didn't have enough interrupts and assistance with the affixes, so we had to run it back. We were then able to time this dungeon. This added 78 to our total rating, which put us at a 1985. We did get a hero level neck, which was the Iron Shell Pendant. This was the same item level, but we would be able to upgrade it further than the one we had. We then moved on to a plus 18 Atala Dazar. Me being the good old derp that I am, I forgot to record the Razan fight, but I don't think I've ever actually wiped on this boss, so you'll just have to trust me that we completed it. We then moved on to the next trash, and sadly, we went to the right towards the priestess again. We ended up wiping on the same exact pull as last time, which was trash on the stairs. The tank did pull the mobs off the stairs and into the open area, which was a good idea. I ended up dying to a big ol' AoE ability. This was 100% my fault, and I should have done better, but I just got one shot by it. And I'll tell you what, I freaking hate Spiteful. I died to the same exact Spiteful shade in the same exact freaking area as last time. After the priestess fight, we went down the stairs and fought the trash that was right after that. On this pole, we almost died due to the fire that comes from the wall because of my A plus positioning, right? Thankfully, we didn't die and we were able to move on. And as we were approaching the last mobs before the Volkal fight, the rogue freaking sapped the very left mob so that way we could just sneak in. It was awesome. I've never seen anything like this before. I was shook, especially after last episode where the rogue was using the shroud ability to allow us to pass by groups of mobs with no issue. I'm very highly considering bringing a rogue to every dungeon I can. Their utility and what they allow us to do is awesome, and I may consider making my own rogue sometime soon. After we snuck past that group, we were then able to kill Volkal with just a single death on our part. On Yasma, the tank was doing an awesome job of rotating and moving the boss. We did have the Soul Ren go off at the same time that we were hit by destabilization from the affix, and we almost wiped due to not being able to kill the souls because we were destabilized, right? Thankfully, we were able to kill the souls, and the only person that died was the rogue, but we were able to continue on and kill Yasma, completing the dungeon. And you'll never freaking believe it. We finally did it. We finally completed our goal as Keystone Master. And also, we got some pretty good gloves to top it off. And we're going to start out this episode just like we start out every single other one, with that good old weekly vault. From the vault, we had an option of a Zealous Pyronite Warplate. This was a 480 item level chest piece and was a 17 item level upgrade for us. This was also our first chance to have a mythic piece of gear. To top it all off, it was a tier piece of gear so we would not have to take it to the Revival Catalyst. We also had the option for an Abalone Plate Armor, which was a 476 chest piece. So as you can assume, it was a pretty easy choice for us. So we grabbed our first piece of mythic gear and boy did this impact our overall item level. We gained a whopping one overall item level, which put us at 468. We did end up getting an 18 rise from the vault and the affixes we're going to be dealing with this week are fortified, afflicted, and raging. So before we got into our first mythic dungeon, we had some crest left over from last week and we upgraded our helmet to 476. We also upgraded our brand new chest to 483, and this put us at an item level of 469. We then got into a plus 16 fall. On the first pull, we pulled some pretty good numbers and got up to 500k DPS. And I'm not gonna lie, we probably could have done a little bit better with the rotation and done a whole lot more numbers, but one of my goals for this episode, and just this week in general, is to use our utility a little more effectively. So I was a little too focused on the group and watching the health rather than my rotation and making sure that the group didn't dip down too far. This was my first time playing Afflicted as a Rep Paladin, and honestly, this is the first time that I've been able to do anything to assist the group on Afflicted. I was honestly doing my best to clear the Afflicted souls. Towards the end of the dungeon, I feel like I got it down pretty well. Also, deadly boss mobs screaming souls at me uh, when they popped up was also a huge help. I attempted to use my Lay on Hands ability to save the tank's life, but sadly I was unable to get it off in time and I actually just wasted the ability. After the tank died, that led to an almost full wipe, 
We ended up dying, but thankfully the rest of the group was able to finish the poll. And after that, the boss went down very smoothly and we were able to continue on. So going back to how I mentioned that I wanted to focus on our utility, right? I did a whole lot of preparation for this week. We made a bunch of macros for our abilities to make life a little bit easier on us. I should have honestly done this a long time ago, but you guys kept calling me a dummy in the videos, all that kind of stuff. So this helped me to try to get this accomplished. So what we ended up doing is we made a mouse over macro for our lay on hands. If you do not know what this allows me to do is it allows me to just hover over the character or the portrait on the side and cast the ability on the person. We also made a mouse over macro for the blessing and protection and the cleanse toxins ability. I also made a macro for the final reckoning ability. So what this does is it allows me to cast the ability immediately where my mouse is located and I don't get the big green circle that I have to click on anymore. I will say that there is definitely an adjustment period when with using this macro. There are definitely a couple times that I throw the ability off to the side and I barely hit the group because I'm not used to it and I didn't position my mouse correctly. For all of you guys that have been here for previous episodes, you are going to be extremely proud of how much I use my ability and my utility as a paladin for this episode. I did run some heroics just to test out the abilities and everything was honestly working great. It was also a little fun to see how much freaking damage I did in a heroic dungeon and how quickly we made it through that dungeon with me as geared as I am. Another small housekeeping thing is that we worked really hard to clear out the error that we kept getting in our previous episodes. We went through a bunch of settings, disabling some, keeping others, all that kind of stuff until it seemed like we fixed the issue. I do want to say a serious, huge thank you to everyone that left a comment and attempted to help me fix this issue on previous episodes. Without you guys, I would not even have known where to begin, so your help was monumental to try to fix this. Anyway, back to the dungeon and the gameplay you guys clicked on this video for. On the trash leading up to Manifested Timeways, your boy used Blessing and Protection for the first time ever. Sadly, the monk still died. I don't know why the monk still died, because you can see the ability on, my, on the character and you can also see that it was now on cooldown. So if anybody can help me understand what happened here, I'd greatly appreciate it because I finally used the freaking ability, right? And the player still died. And I was just like, what the heck? I was big confused. We then continued on to the manifested timeways. As you guys recommended, I ran the opposite way and it worked out a whole lot better for me. It was so much easier to dodge the balls of horribleness running counterclockwise. Moving on from the manifested timeways, good gosh, it's been a long time since I've been in the fall dungeon. I completely forgot the ads leading up to the third boss freaking hurt. So I was able to use my defensive and my heals to try to help the healer out so that way we didn't wipe. While fighting the last boss of the dungeon, the monk absolutely popped off and was doing some serious numbers for a single target fight. I also didn't know this mostly because I've never healed before, right? But I had no idea you had to watch Chromie's health on this fight. So during this fight, the warlock pointed out that Chromie's health was getting a little low, right? And I helped the healer heal Chromie back up. I will say I wasn't a huge fan of how I played this dungeon. It was my first dungeon back for a minute and I felt way out of practice. I was also really focused on trying to use my utility, so I wasn't doing the best DPS. But we were able to kill the boss and that added 73 to our rating, which put us at a total rating of 2099. From the chest, we actually got Zealous Commander Cuffs. This was a 463 wrist that was a six item level upgrade for us. Also, this was a champion piece of gear that was replacing a veteran wrist, so it was a pretty good upgrade. After we got back to Valdraken, we upgraded our beautiful chest to 486, but it didn't change our item level. After this one, we attempted to get into dungeons for, I don't even know how long, but it felt like forever. So we didn't get into one, so we just created our own for our 18th rise. While making this group, the tank that applied was a pretty high mythic rating and item level, but he was grouped up with the mage. The mage had a super low item level, but his mains rating was pretty high, so I accepted them into the group. Once we got in, the first pull of this dungeon was extremely hectic as it always seems to be on Rise. But even with all the hecticness and my small brain trying to comprehend what was going on on the screen, we were able to do some okay-ish DPS. On the second pull with the Sentinel, I used my Lay on Hands to heal the healer like a boss. I told you guys you'd be proud of me. After we killed the Sentinel, I, I will say is that I liked the route the tank took for this run. By the time that we were all done with the trash leading up to the boss, Tyr had already spawned and was ready for us to fight, so it worked out great. Other than the group seriously lacking on the orbs and the mage dying from damage, the fight went pretty smooth. I know that you guys have heard me mention that I made a bunch of pro gamer moves and whatnot throughout the series, but it did take three attempts for me to make it through the big hallway with the orbs, so I'm going to remove that pro gamer title until I can make it on the first try again. I did almost die on the trash in the big circle and I had to use lay on hands on myself to stay alive. I could have just shielded, but you know, that's not the point, alright? I used, I used my ability. Be proud of me. 
We were able to make it to the time loss battlefield. I got the mortar put on me and I learned from last time I don't want to use my bubble if I don't have to. So as I was running him away, my dummy self got stuck on this staircase thing right here. So I had to bubble to save myself. Two people from the group ended up dying during this fight and had to run back. After the tank got killed, I accidentally pulled the next phase of the fight due to my concentration still being on the ground from when I was attacking one of the suicide bombers. I did end up dying, so I had to run it back before they started the actual boss fight. I will say, I don't know what Blizzard is feeding these monks, right? But they have been popping off lately. They're just going ham, right? This monk pumped some serious numbers on the boss and was one of the main reasons why this dungeon went so smoothly in the first place. Morchi then went down super easily and we quickly moved on to the final boss. As we were running to the boss, we almost got sent off the platform and then we almost full sent one of our buddies off by running into one of the orbs. After thankfully making it to the last boss with no issues, I did use my lay on hands on the tank a little preemptively, but I just wanted to make sure that we didn't wipe. I don't know if it was just because I was so worried about him or what, but I then almost killed the tank by trapping him next to the cave wall and dragging my swirlies into his escape route. Thankfully, we were able to kill the final boss and finish this dungeon. I don't know if it's this series or if it's just because I'm recording or what, but the monk died right as the final boss did. At this point, this is I think it's happened every episode. I have no idea what's going on, but it is definitely a trend for this challenge. But we did end up adding 34 to our overall rating, which put us at 2133. The luck was with us this week. We got a pair of 467 item level hands. These were a pair of Greaves of Parallel Lives. These gloves were a hero piece of gear and they were a three item level upgrade for us. After we got out of that dungeon, we completed our final upgrade for our chest, which put its item level to 489. This brought us up to a 470 item level. The next dungeon we delved into was a 17 Throne of Tides. As always, we got to pump some serious numbers on the first pull. At this point, I felt like I was getting pretty used to Afflicted, and honestly, I was pretty proud of my ability to clear it out. It also felt really good to be able to assist the group in a positive way during these dungeons for this affix, and I felt like I was really contributing to the group. We did end up using our Lay on Hands on the tank in the pull after the water elevator, and then the Shaman got absolutely demolished during the fight. Thankfully, the tank cleared out the entire room before the first boss, so I didn't have to worry about making a fool of myself during the second boss fight. We then made it to the Nazjar fight. While fighting the boss, I had to use my Lay on Hands to save the heals from an early demise. I know that I've mentioned the fact that I've been using Lay on Hands and the utilities a lot in this episode, and I know that I continue to do it after this. But a lot of people pointed out to me that I would more likely complete a lot more keys and have a lot more success in dungeons if I start using, focusing on my utility more. And honestly, I completely agree. One of the reasons why I included a lot of the times that I use the ability and all that kind of stuff this episode is that I want you guys to know that I am listening to you and I am trying to improve, right? I mean, I know I'm improving, but it's super slowly, but all that matters is that we get better, right? After killing Nashjar, we moved on to the good old commander. I actually used the pillars of the walls on this fight, so that way I wouldn't get knocked back into the air for a super long time with each knockback, so that kind of made me feel like a boss. Thankfully, this group was awesome and we were able to move along with the dungeon super smoothly. I will say is on the trash leading up to the Mindbender, I got pulled in by one of the Watchers and got one shot by the ability. I haven't gotten killed by one of these in a long time and I think it's because I tried to run the opposite way instead of running back, which I never do. I was just trying to position myself in a better position, but I just didn't make it in time. I did attempt to use all my defensive for the Flame Shock ability like the good little Paladin I am on Mindbender, and I did have to throw out the Lay on Hands to keep the tank alive. After that, I got super close to dying, but thankfully between me and the healer, I was able to stay alive. And then I'll tell you what, is we made it through the next hallway with no deaths. I don't know if I've ever made it through this hallway with no deaths before. I was freaking blown away when we did it. And at this time, I did notice that my blessing of protection was not working for the dungeon. I tried te tweaking it in between runs, but it just was not working at this time. So at a later time, I'm going to have to freaking figure out what's going on with that. We were then able to kill the final boss with no problems, and that added 77 to our total rating, which put us at 2,210. We then upgraded our ugly face sealer to 480, or what you beautiful people that are going to like and subscribe call a helmet. The next dungeon that we did was a 16 Atala Dazar. On the first boss, Razam, we tried to walk to the pillars so that way I could break line of sight for his Zephyr ability, but I was being a little lazy and I didn't use my mount ability, and I figured I could get there on time, right? Well, we most definitely did not make it. Directly after that, the tank got gobbled up by the big old chicken, and we tried to use Blessing and Protection on macro on him, but it sadly it still was not working. And also, I don't know why this is happening, but the error that we were dealing with started popping back up. 
I did notice while I was editing and all that kind of stuff that it's only popping up for specific dungeons, so hopefully I'll be able to narrow down the issue and fix it. We then went right towards the Priestess. And I know you guys gave a lot of good reasons to go this way instead of heading towards Full Call, and I, I get it, I do, I do. But dang, do I much prefer the other way. While we were fighting the trash leading towards the Priestess, I noticed that having the mass over macro for my cleanse for the afflicted affix was freaking awesome. It made it so much easier to deal with and so much easier to cast this ability and get back into my rotation. So this is my message to anyone that does not have a macro for these kinds of things. Take it from me. Learn from my experience, right? Spend 10 minutes figuring out how to do it. It will make your life so much freaking easier. We did end up having a couple deaths on the way towards the Priestess, but no wipes. So I'll consider that a huge win. On the Priestess fight, the first ad, I messed up, right? I, I used my stun on the wrong ad. We did eventually kill it, but it did consume two pulls before it died. So when the next transfusion happened, I hit my bubble to make sure that I didn't die. And thankfully, the rest of the group could hit their transfusions and all that kind of stuff. And we could continue on and kill the Priestess later. So on the Screamers, just after the big circle in the middle of the dungeon, we ended up getting feared. And one of the Paladins actually got feared to the edge of the bridge and fell off. I honestly didn't see them fall off at the time until I saw them running up the stairs just a couple minutes after. We then killed Volkal and continued on to Yasma. So the tank started the Yasma fight before everybody was inside the tank area, and thankfully the last pally was able to make it in right before the gates closed. That being said, he did pull a Screamer, so the Screamer ended up getting pulled into the boss area, so we were fighting that along with the boss. A little bit later on in the fight, a group of Solrens made it to the boss, and after we killed them, the Screamer did their Scream ability, and we all got feared. I, like the good little paladin I am, used my Lay on Hands to heal one of the other paladins. I then almost died because I ran over a spider like the dummy I am, and then I guess I decided I did not learn my lesson from a few minutes earlier, and I ran straight into another spider. I honestly didn't even see this one, and when I did try to move, it was just too late. After that, they had to waste a battle res on me, and we were able to finish the dungeon. This added 72 to our rating, which put us at 2,282 overall. As we were leaving this dungeon, you know, you say the classic TY and GG, all that fun stuff, right? I don't know if I had a small stroke or what happened, but I apparently forgot how to type, and this nonsense was broadcasted to the whole group. I don't even know what this was. It was supposed to be TY and GG, but it didn't come out that way. After this dungeon, I apparently was on a macro creating spree because then we made a mouse over macro for our flash of light ability. With our new and improved macros and all that fun stuff, we went and upgraded our helmet to 483, and it was at this time that I remembered that we had the mark of mastery that we got last episode. So we went to the Emerald Dream and we used our mark to get a pair of 473 Zealous Pyre Knights Elites. This was a hero piece of gear and a 16 item level upgrade for us. This also brought us to an item level overall of 471. And as of right now, the only thing that we really, really need to replace is our 447 back. After this, we got into our first freaking 20 Mythic Dungeon. We got into a plus 20 Dark Heart Thicket. And the best part about getting into this one, this is the last dungeon that we needed to get a plus rating on all of our dungeons for both affixes. I, I was super excited, right? I was super excited, super prized to be in our first 20. And while we were waiting for the group to fully form up, we changed our transmog. The transmog's not the best, but hey, I wanted to change it up for a bit. On the first poll, we actually did some pretty good numbers, but dude, this hunter, this hunter freaking popped off. This hunter was super close to hitting one mil DPS on this, on this poll. What the actual heck? I didn't even know that was physically possible with this. I, I, I don't even know. I was lost for words. It was honestly, I was honestly flabbergasted. I guess that's what you can do when you actually know your class and you can actually use your cooldowns effectively, right? So as we were moving on through the dungeon, I will say is that I haven't been playing my main due to pretty much entirely focusing on Paladin and editing videos and all that kind of stuff. I've been pretty, mu pretty much focusing on this challenge solely. So I haven't been running high-end dungeons lately, and I forgot how much longer mobs live on Fortified, especially in higher dungeons. It felt like some of these pulls took like six years and I felt like I wasn't doing any damage at all. On the two bears before the first boss, the tank put a skull on one of the grizzlies and I honestly didn't see it at all, right? This almost led to a full wipe. Your boy ended up dying and by the time that I did come back, they had already taken care of business. The first boss then went down super smoothly. We were at the bottom of the damage meters for DPS, but honestly, your boy was just happy to be there. I was just trying to help in all the ways I could. I was just happy, right? I was just happy to be here. On the next trash, I ended up getting O, oh, and I mean absolutely obliterated to a mushroom. I think this is one of the first times that I've actually gotten hit by one of these mushrooms. I didn't know that this was a one shot if you walk into the AOE area. I thought it was just a damage over time, but hey, you learn something new every day, right? 
Also looking back at it now, I really need to start using my Blade of Justice before I use my Judgment to activate my Force Set. I don't know when I started or why I started using my uh, Judgment first, but I need to stop doing this. The group then did an awesome job of interrupting all the Dwellers. Normally, whenever we fight these mobs, everyone gets feared like two or three times at the very least, right? I think only me and another person got feared the whole time, and I was honestly super impressed with this group. We then continued on to the Oakheart fight. I got the throw ability placed on me where Oakheart throws the tank at you, and I used my shield ability, so that way I would take no damage. While we were continuing the fight, I threw my lay on hands at the hunter, and they went and got one shot immediately after I healed them the full. So I battle res them and we continued to kill the boss. So after Oakheart went down, we continued on to the next trash. While fighting the next mobs, we ended up dying and we actually had to end up running back. Then for whatever reason, whenever we rezzed, it said that we were still in combat, so I couldn't use my mount and I had to run all the way back. I saw that we were gonna have to wipe for this one, right? For this poll, I knew that we were gonna have to wipe, so I stayed back. For some reason, they still registered me in as in the fight and they aggroed on me. So I just went ahead and kamikaze my way in so that way we could reset. After we reset, we went into the next boss and we skipped the blood thing. So that way we didn't have to deal with it this time. While fighting the third boss, I did have to lay my hand on my chest due to almost dying. But other than that, it was a super easy fight. After we killed the third boss, I started to worry if we were actually even going to be able to complete this dungeon on time. I knew we had a good amount of trash left before the final boss and still had the final boss fight. As we were moving on through the trash, the hunter ended up dying on the last group before the boss and I had to lay on hands of the tank. But we made it through the trash and started the last boss with two and a half minutes to go. And I'll tell you what, this hunter was nuts. This hunter went crazy on his DPS and thankfully was pumping some huge numbers. While fighting the boss, due to me having the large pool on me, I had to stand back and attack from far, so I was just throwing out my abilities left to right. Like I was just throwing them from afar, just trying to do everything that I could. As we were continuing the fight, the healer did end up dying, so we had to res him. And with 18 freaking seconds left, we killed the last boss. I'll tell you what, during this fight, my music had stopped, everything. I didn't notice. I was so freaking focused, just trying to do everything that I could. I, I, I was ignoring everything around me. From the chest, the tank ended up getting a 470 back, which was the Cloak of Fading Echoes. And God bless America, sometimes I freaking love people. The tank didn't need it, so he traded it to us, and it was a huge freaking upgrade. This was a 23 item level upgrade, which brought us up to 472 item level. Once we got out of there, we went ahead and upgraded our belt to 480, which brought us to 473. After this, we kept trucking right along, and we got into an 18 Waycrest Manor. I will say is that the first pull of every dungeon is just like so much fun. You get to crank so much good DPS and pop your cooldowns and just go absolutely ham. As we were fighting, the hunter then started to show us up in our DPS, right? So what we what we did is we focused up. We went absolutely ham and we did everything in our power to beat him in the DPS race that he didn't even know we were in. Sadly, he still he still beat us, right? But, you, you know, I tried. That's all that I can say, right? The sisters then went down super easily as always. But on the poll after the sisters, everyone was participating in the DPS race. And we lost once again. On the Goliath fight, we blessing and protectioned ourselves out of Soul of Thorns like you guys have been yelling at me to do for weeks now. After the Goliath fight, we stayed in the courtyard and we DPS down a whole bunch of pulls. I got very close to pulling some extra mobs in the courtyard due to avoid the silencing bell thing, right? But thankfully I didn't go full dummy on this one and we were able to continue on to the raw fight. So as we were fighting the raw fight, I just have a question for any of the rep paladins out there, right? Just curious, do you have any recommendations for single target rotation? The Ret Paladin AoE is super easy and it goes hard, but I feel like I fall off like crazy on the single target fights. I know that I could do better about using my final verdict instead of Divine Storm, but sometimes I want to use Divine Storm to help the heals out a little bit healing. But is there anything else that I could be doing better on? Is there is there anything that you guys recommend? I would greatly appreciate a comment or any tips or anything like that. I also know my DPS was not the best for this episode. Don't get me wrong, it's not horrible, and I could definitely be doing worse, right? But I was really focusing on really trying to use my utility and defensives better for this episode. I feel like I really accomplished my goals, especially how many times I've had to say lay on hands during this episode. But I'm going to try for the next episode to pull everything together, rotation, utility, and all that kind of stuff, so that way I can really focus and try to become the best paladin I can be. After we killed Rawl, I'll say that this group was really great. We were able to continue on and kill the final boss without any issues. I wish I could tell you more about what happened, but the rest of the dungeon was honestly super smooth. But after we did kill the last boss, we still sadly had one freaking percent left. So we had to go to the beginning of the dungeon to finish it out. 
This was a huge learning moment for me because I did not know that you could do this in Waycrest Manor. If you didn't know this and you need enemy forces after the last boss, you can just go talk to this person instead of hitting the portal at the top and it will return to you to the beginning of the dungeon. Once we did that, it added a 45 to our total rating, which brought us up to 2,444. We then went to the upgrade people and upgraded our belt to 483. And if you thought we were done after that dungeon, you would be wrong. We then got into a 17 in Tala Dazar. As soon as we got to Razan, I landed directly on a freaking raptor. And I'll tell you what, I'm super proud of my ability to, you know, not walk into stationary pools of death, right? I'm super proud to say that I can avoid the stationary pools, right? But I walked directly into this one. I messed up on this one, all right? Before we got into this dungeon, I actually did some work and I was finally able to get my blessing of protection macro working. Finally figured it out, got it taken care of so that way we didn't have to worry about it anymore. And the reason why I know it works is because the tank got gobbled up by Razan. I threw the blessing on him like the mythic raider I wish I could be and he lived. Then as we were moving along on the fight, the monk almost died. So I went and I laid my hand on his shoulder and I told him it's going to be all right. Thankfully, the monk was so inspired by my words, we were able to kill Razan and move on super quickly. And I know I should get used to it at this point, right? But we sadly went towards the priestess and we did have a good amount of trouble heading this way. We had a couple people die because we just kept pulling more and more mobs and we ended up wiping. We then went up the stairs and we pulled a big group and then in, then in classic Solly Holly fashion, I pulled extra mobs. I did it. I know. I didn't, I, I fully, I fully expected at this point. We should just clear out everything at all times. Just should just warn the tank. Hey, clear out everything. I'm going to pull extra. I know I am. After we pulled the mobs, we ended up wiping and then we reset. After the reset, we went through and we killed the mobs at a little bit slower pace and we were able to make it through. Thankfully, there were not shades to have to worry about and we didn't, and we were able to make it to the priestess with just a couple more deaths. We then killed the priestess and made it to Volkal with no issues, but I'll tell you what is the Volk call the totem phase was a rough one and it, it was on me. I blew all my big cooldowns in the fight before, so I was really struggling to DPS down my totem. The tank ended up coming over and assisting me, but thankfully they all went down at the same time and we were able to kill Volk call, but it was, it was a rough one for a minute. I'm not going to lie to you. We then completed this dungeon two chesting it, which added a whopping four to our total mythic rating, which put us at 2,448 overall. And if you thought we were done, you would be right. We are ending this episode with a item level of 473 and a mythic rating of 2,448. At the beginning of this episode, we have an item level of 473 and a mythic rating of 2,448. We're going to start off this episode just like the previous five with our mythic vault. In our mythic vault, we had the option of a mythic ring, which was the seal and regal Loa. This was a 483 ring, which was a 13 item level upgrade for us. We also had the option of an accelerating sand glass trinket, which was a 476 item level. This was also a 13 item level upgrade for us. We did end up taking the ring, which brought us up to a 474 item level overall. We also got a plus 20 Everbloom from the vault. So from here, we actually ended up doing our weekly event, which was time walking. We did the Achindum, I don't know how to say it, but that one, right? Skyreach, then the Achindum one again, Shadowmoon Burial Grounds, and then Grimrail Depot. Other than some transmog, this didn't really benefit us at all, but I'm a bit of a transmog whore, so it was still a win for me. So we then got a group together for our plus 20 Everbloom. And I will say seven episodes in, right, and I'm still making dummy mistakes. I forgot to record the first half of the first poll. It's not a huge deal, but I was just pumped to be there and excited to get into it. We did end up dying on the first poll, and I started recording directly after that. So as we were moving through the dungeon and going through the trash, I will say is that season four is coming really soon. I plan on doing another keystone challenge when season four hits. I plan on going with a tank and seeing how far we can push as a tank in Mythic Plus. As of right now, I'm not 100% sure what spec I want to play for season four. So I want to give you guys the opportunity to help me choose which spec I want to play. So leave a comment down below and tell me which spec you think I should choose for tank for season four. Other than right now, I don't really have any ways to do a poll other than the comment section. So that's the only really option that I have, but I will try to look into new ones for the future. My only experience as a tank is running some in-game content back in Shadowlands, right? But I don't even think I made it past plus fives as a prop warrior. All that being said, I want to give a huge shout out and a sincere thank you to absolutely every single one of you that are watching these videos. I started making videos just a little bit ago and you guys have had an amazing response and have been extremely supportive with all your tips and all of your good jobs keep going all that kind of stuff so seriously thank you I, I i can't tell you how much i appreciate you guys 
Now back to the dungeon. The tank proved that you can pull the mobs after Witherbark, before or during the Witherbark fight if you want to. We DPS down the big pole and then fought Witherbark. And I'll tell you what, this group went hard. We almost killed Witherbark in one Brittle Bark, which was insane. After Witherbark, we went down and moved on to the next trash. And I will say is we were doing some all right damage, but this Destro Warlock was popping off. As we were moving through the trash, the Shaman then got deleted on the trash two poles before the Ancient Protectors. And I will say is that I've heard other creators say the same thing, but I wish Blizzard would do something about all the vines and stuff that you can see at the top of the screen when you zoom all the way out, right? For the first time in the dungeon, it's super immersive and it's really cool to see the vines and all the flowers and all that stuff. But after the first time when you're just trying to push in game content, it just gets in the way and it's super annoying. So I wish that they would do something about that. We then killed the Ancient Protectors and moved on to my nemesis for this season, the Archmage. On the trash before the Archmage, your boy messed up. The tank almost died and I, like the small brain goldfish I am, put blessing and protection on him. And if you do know why this is a bad idea, you know what is coming. We almost wiped because I did this. For those of you that don't know, when you throw blessing and protection on someone, they lose all aggro, right? I don't even know what I was freaking thinking when I did this. Someone even commented that I should not put blessing on the tank on the last episode and I still freaking did it. Afterwards, when we were running back, I have 100% blamed it on pressing the wrong button be with the group because I was so freaking embarrassed, right? After that, we moved on to the Archmage fight. And I don't know what was up with me on the night of those recordings, but boy, was I struggling. While fighting the Archmage, the healer actually ended up dying, and I forgot that I moved my battle res over here to a keybind, so I went into my freaking spell book and placed it on the bar where it used to be. By the time that I did that, someone else had a battle res, then we were able to keep going. We did end up getting hit by an ice block during the fight, and then we got pulled into lava by the pole ability and almost died, but thankfully we didn't die and we were able to keep going. After we got hit by the ice block, we avoided that ability like the freaking plague. Whenever the ability was cast, we popped our mountain ability and we got the heck out of there. After a little while, the Archmage went down and we continued on to the final boss. On the last boss, we ended up dying, and we definitely could have avoided this. We could have used our defensives or anything, or heals or anything, but at this point, you guys should be used to me letting you down, right? We then killed the final boss to chesting the dungeon. This added 51 to our rating, which put us at freaking 2,499. One mythic rating away from Keystone Hero. Like, how is that? How? I was elated and pissed at the same time. How is this possible? Like, we're so close, but like, come on. If I wouldn't have died on the last boss, we probably would have gotten it. So from the chest, we got a plus 22 Dark Heart Thicket. We also upgraded our new and improved ring, which brought us to 474. We then got into a 17 Waycrest Manor and knocked it out as quickly as we could. This added 7 to our total rating. This put us at 2506. And we freaking did it, boys. We finally hit Keystone Hero on our Rhett Paladin. I know a lot of people have left comments talking about how this is super easy and whatnot, but this is my second time hitting Keystone Hero since Mythic Dungeons came out. I'm still a little new to endgame and new to pushing higher content, so this is still a huge win for me and I felt great. It was awesome. I honestly thought about running a bunch of 15 so that way I could get some worm crest, upgrade some of my gear and drag out the video for a little bit of time, right? But I don't want to waste your guys' time. So that is honestly going to be the end of the video and the end of the challenge. We hit our goal of Keystone Master then pushed our way to Keystone Hero. We pugged our way through all the mythic dungeons and we learned a whole lot in the process. At least I did. I don't know about you guys, but I learned a lot. If you guys have liked this challenge in these videos, think about liking and subscribing. These videos do take me a long time for me to make, and honestly, it's because I'm super slow. Some likes and subscribes would help inflate my super low ego and convince me to do more and maybe do it faster, you know? As always, I do want to say is I greatly appreciate you guys, and I hope you have enjoyed this challenge, and I'll see you on the next one.